must learn. All right, we're going. Hey, Antonio, thanks for coming on Judo Know Me, man. It's really great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope you like nothing happened. Uh, you had to run out. You said it was like pretty crazy at the, the supermarket. Yeah, there were so many people. It was mega crowded. You can see them lining up from the basement floor up until the first floor. This is in Shinjuku. I can't imagine what it's like in other parts of town. <laughs> it's crazy with this pandemic, you know. Our whole lives turned upside down. Right? But uh have uh so I was like really curious. So Antonio and I kind of did a little acting gig before and it was my first one and he kinda of guided me through uh kind of what to expect about being the uh the guy gene freak show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when we did that uh comedy thing. Yeah. But um what was his name? Uh, like Kanazuki, Kane, yeah. Kanazuki, yeah, yeah. Kanazuki, one of the and, biggest Japanese comedians. Right, and that 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 was really cool. Uh, but yeah, I totally didn't know what to expect. And granted, thankfully, you know, we had so much time waiting around, you know, which I'm sure probably you do all the time in show business. That it was like we got a good chance to like kind of talk and talk with uh, Antoine and like everybody. Yeah. Involved. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I like about these jobs that you have some time to um, communicate with everyone else who's on set. You get to know other actors, other people who have the same interests as you. And most of the time they're from different cultural backgrounds, different countries. You get to experience a lot of things, get to do a lot of cultural exchange just by going to your job. I think that's one of the best things in show bigs, actually. Hmm. Yeah, no, that was really cool. Um, and we got to sit, I, I love sitting in the break room and eating those nice cookies. I think Ringo, <laughs> yeah. Ringo Chan had all the candy, had all the yeah. candy in the break room. She gave everybody candy. I think that's why she won. Because exactly. She gave everybody she, candy. <laughs> <laughs> she gave all the won. apple candy. She bribed everyone with apples, that Ringo. <laughs> that's why we lost. Go ahead, I feel like Beyonce. Um. <laughs> uh, it wasn't because anything I did wrong. It was because of Ringo Chan bribed everybody. Yeah, know. we were great. Actually, when I saw it later on TV, it was amazing. It was even better than our rehearsals because we did two rehearsals before we actually had uh, had to do it at the show. Mm -hmm. And we did it better than any time before. And what kind of disappointed me was that they cut half of it. We did it two times, remember? The whole yeah. dance, the... The haka, yeah. The haka, yeah. We did the, we were pretending. Did it two times, but they show it only once. That, that that was kind of frustrating, you know. Well, I guess I see why they probably try and streamline for TV, but the second time was way funnier than the first time. But <laughs> true, true, exactly. But, but funny, uh, Kane, Kanezuki son kind of called me out as like, you know, I thought it was really funny, but I'm really just my Japanese isn't that good, especially the cultural references that they use. I don't know who the actors they're imitating. I just think his face is really funny. And I, I told him, like, oh, ho and he's like, oh, do, do, do no tokoro. and I was like, uh, <laughs> I couldn't. <tell. laughs> I, just thought, I just thought his face was really expressive. I don't know. I didn't know the people he was. I think I only know two of the people that I think he was imitating. And, uh, but he totally called me out on that. And I was like, I'm kind of glad we didn't win because then they wouldn't put that part on. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, uh, I liked all of it. <laughs> Dem <laughs> yeah, best answer. <laughs> the most diplomatic way. Zemba, Zemba, Zemba. I mean, usually in English, I try and put in, like, you know, the parts that I really like that I paid attention, but my Japanese is not that good. <laughs> no, no, you're great. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Antonio. So Antonio, not only has he been doing acting, he also does translation. And thank God he does karate because that's loosely relative to my, my show. So I get to get, have him on. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy for this invitation. Like, uh, I just want to say it now that I'm no black belt. I have a long experience of doing martial arts. I started when I was 15. 
doing Muay Thai, the Thai kickboxing for four years in high school. Okay. And then I switched to Aikido because I had studied Japanese and I wanted to do a Japanese martial art next. Okay. And I was invited to interpret at a few of the seminars for a really famous uh, Shihan and Sensei from Aikikai. Aikikai mm -hmm. is one of the biggest Aikido organizations. And, and I'm sorry, this is when you're already in Japan? No, this was before I came to Japan. I was still living in Bulgaria. Oh, wow. Okay, and you got the invitation. I, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Yes, I, uh, I was a student in university studying Japanese studies at the time. Okay. And so, so you were already since, interested in Japanese studies when you kind of wanted to learn Japanese martial arts? Oh, yes, yes. That's what uh, pushed me towards Japanese martial arts, actually. If I hadn't been interested into the culture or interested uh, into Japanese language or the country known as Japan, <laughs> I don't think I ever would have switched Muay Thai for Aikido and later on for Kyokushin Karate. Okay. That's really interesting. Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You were in the middle of something. What were you saying? Uh, no, no, I was, I was just saying that, uh, yeah, I started off with Muay Thai, but then later changed to Aikido because I thought that it was good to train and learn the name of the techniques because it's really hard to interpret at sports events and martial art events when you don't have profound knowledge, knowledge of all the terminology used in that martial art. True. I, for example, in Aikido, they have uh, Tenkan, they have Tenkai, they have Suariwaza, they have Nikyo Lock. They have so many um, different types of locks and techniques, which you can always, you know, like get a list of and start studying as if it's a lesson. But the best way to do that is not by relying on um, textbooks or materials you can find online. The best way is to experience it through your own sweat, blood, and tears. So that's what drove me to actually go to the dojo and begin my training a few months before I was scheduled to interpret for Kobayashi Sensei. Kobayashi, Yukimitsu Kobayashi is the name. He was the one who was invited to hold the seminar in Bulgaria. And that was my first interpreting uh, for Aikido event. Wow. Um, Later on, I had the opportunity to interpret for other Aikikai really well-known senseis, um, such as uh, Hori Sensei. He's one of the biggest, most famous senseis in uh, Osaka, again in Aikikai. Oh, wow. I really... And, I'm a big fan of that myself, of kind of what you said. Uh, I think the Japanese way of, I think it's not necessarily about being the biggest badass, but they just have really a really great way of teaching. Like they have a system, everything's labeled and named. Um, that's what the thing I'm re really drew me into uh, Japanese martial arts when I started with uh, judo. And uh, yes. And of course, there's many kind of different ways you can apply your technique and how you find it works for yourself. But I love that there's a, a base and a foundation that uh, you can always go through. And you might think when you're a beginner, oh, I'm a little different. But I think the more you do it and the, the more you're into it and the more you've competed, you know, oh, my teachers were right. <laughs> and, and, I, and there is like they have thought of these things that I need to practice. Yeah, true. It's really good, uh, not just for learning the Japanese words or for the physical workout. It was only always, uh, it was also very good for developing a sense of a spiritual notion. Like it trains not only your body, it also trains your soul. That was the best thing about Japanese martial arts. I mean, we have some elements of that in Muay Thai as well. Like every martial art it teaches you discipline and uh, teaches you respect towards the opponent. But in Japan, that's a whole new level. Hmm. Yeah, the way how you greet your opponents and everything. Like, uh, you know, like boxing is great and kickboxing is great too. But they don't have this depth that Japanese martial arts have. And I was looking for something which was closer to Muay Thai, 
where there were a lot of striking techniques and one which would be Japanese, original Japanese. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to switch to Kyokushin Karate in the long run. Because first, I was asked to interpret for the top of the Kyokushin Kan Federation, Hatsuo Royama and uh, Hiroshige. Mm -hmm. They were the president and the vice president of the federation. And that was one thing to mo motivate me. The other thing was that, yeah, it was a striking a martial art with a lot of striking techniques, just like Muay Thai. And I could develop this sense of a Japanese spiritual, um, how should I say it, like experience. Okay. To learn not only just to defeat my opponent, but to respect my opponent while fighting him. Okay. You know, that's the biggest thing you can earn out of Japanese martial arts. Yeah, wow. I, I, I really think it's fascinating that you uh, chose Kyokushin Karate. Because not saying one is better than the other, but I always admire Kyokushin Karate because there's a lot of forms of martial arts that um, they might be good for certain applications, but they don't necessarily practice or they don't spar. And from what I know of Kyokushin Karate, is they hit each other a lot. Yes, it's one of the most <laughs> brutal martial arts in the world, if not the most brutal. Because if you've seen some videos from the 60s or 70s, wow, the, those people, like, they, they beat the hell out of each other. And back then, first, there wasn't even this rule where you're not allowed to hit your opponent in the face with your fist. Uh, the original oh, okay. Kyokushin rules, they were extremely practical. Uh, you can use every weapon you have, almost every weapon you have in the full contact rules to defeat your opponent. And that means punching with bare hand, bare knuckles to the face. Mm -hmm. But since that turned out really bloody, and especially during training, uh, many people got a lot of injuries. It wasn't very good for TV, so it was hard to promote it. Yeah. And that's why the founder of Kyokushin Karate, um, he, he decided, Masatsu Oyama, he decided to make it a little bit more adapted towards TV, towards TV audiences. So he uh, introduced these full contact rules where you're not allowed to hit the opponent in the face with a punch or an elbow. You can kick or you can uh, hit him with a knee in the face, but you cannot punch or do an elbow blow. So yeah, you can get, still you can get a lot of damage out of Kyokushin Karate. But I mean, that's one of the best things about it because you learn to be tough and to overcome whatever difficulties may come. You have to go through excruciating pain and you have to develop a kind of body armor doing muscle training every week in order to be able to withstand the blows of your opponent. And it's not just about doing muscle training yourself. You also have to train being hit by your opponent. Mm -hmm. So what we also uh, often do, it's called uchi -ai. Like for example, hara uchi. Mm -hmm. Hara is belly and uchi, you know, hit. Okay. Yeah, we hit each other's stomachs with bare fists to train them. And when you know that it's coming, you can contract your muscles. You can harden them so that you can stop the blow. And if you can time it right to release all of the air you have in your lungs just as your opponent hits you, it doesn't hurt so much. Mm -hmm. And while, when you repeat this on and on and on, your body gets used to it and you can take a lot of hits. You become really, really tough. Well, I think the interesting thing I noticed, though, especially with bare fists, is not just for the person getting hit, but if you don't punch properly, uh, you can hurt yourself. So I imagine exactly. you guys were actually training your form so you don't hit, you don't hurt your, break your hand so much, right? You win. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, when we 
practice the forms. You know, Kyokushin Karate has uh, a few types of training. First one is basic training, Kihon Geiko. When we uh, stand still and we do all of our techniques um, okay, so Kihon on is that like, spot. Kihon is like fundamental and Geiko is like practice, right? Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Go ahead. Yes. And while doing these techniques, we don't move. We uh, stand in place and we do different types of blocks, punches, for example, kicks, but we don't move. That's the basic concept of fundamental training. And the next step is the Ido Geiko. Ido Geiko is movement training, where you start to apply what you've learned into the fundamental training in movements. So you move back and forth while doing these same blocks and punches and kicks you are doing in the fundamental training. Mm -hmm. And there are different type of stances. For example, there's the Zenkutsudachi. Um, yeah, Zenkutsudachi is uh, like, like this. Okay. So you have like 30% here. Uh, you have to uh, align your weight. Mm -hmm. Most of your weight is centered forward. So it's 30, 70 percent. Okay. And you have to move forward without uh, changing your height. So your torso needs to stay at the same level while you move and you do the heads and the blocks. Hmm. So the Zen, that's forward. And kutsu is that like foot or uh kutsu is foot yet yeah. yes but zen is uh not not forward it's whole whole oh, whole okay yeah and, and dachi is stance yeah yes yeah, stance okay. exactly so zen... there are different types of uh forms different types of stances for example like kumite dachi is when you uh when, when you fight this is the kumite dachi okay or you have also the, my room is really small here, so no, sorry I can't don't, don't, show you more. Don't break anything. Yeah, there's also the kokutsudachi, where, let's see if we can see this. Which is like this. Oh. You see how your butt goes to the back? Okay. And most of the weight is on the back foot this time. It's not on the front one. So what this is kokutsu. What's ko? Is it ko like independent or like one-sided or? No, ko is uh, back. Back. Okay. Ushiro. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I really like. There are different. Sorry. I really like that concept. Um, in fact, I think that would be applicable to any other uh, martial arts. Like when I show wrestling, um, I think when you're talking about people from different distances, if you can break it up, this is for this level of contact and this is for this level of contact. I think the karate training concept would probably be a good way to teach other things. Now that I think I'm going to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty interesting because once you master the fundamental training, uh, Kihon Geiko and uh, uh, Ido Geiko, your next step would be to use that into the form kata. You know, we have kata in different martial arts mm -hmm. and karate too, where you have to move not only back or forward, you also move diagonally, you move sideways, and you do these uh, really complicated movements. So you're like in some a three-dimensional plane. It's like three-dimensional. It's not just like... Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, that's a good way to uh, explain it. That's when uh, you, you imagine that you're fighting against many opponents at the same time. So each, each uh, movement has some kind of meaning to it. But often when you just look at it, you don't have the idea of what exactly that person is doing. That's why you need to go to the dojo and train. And your teacher tells you exactly uh, which movement means what kind of thing. For example, uh, Maybe you've seen that when in Kyokushin Karate, a lot of people say os, 
they also do this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually uh, really practical. It's not just some kind of formality. Okay. It imagines that someone has grabbed you by the neck, grabbed your shirt, for example, and what you do is put both of your arms inside of his, and then you do like this, which breaks the hold. Okay. This is the meaning of us. Oh, so it's a The movement behind the words. It's not. I yes. Always, I always thought it was like an expression, like a big showing of um, combativeness. But uh, it's really interesting, though. There's a meaning behind that. The, so you're not starting the contact. You're getting your personal. You're breaking. Yes, exactly. I don't think that there's a martial art which implies that you have to start the contact because all martial arts you know, share the same thing that they're for self-defense. It's not about hurting people. It's about defending yourself and the ones you love. It's about protection. Mm. So I think that that's a base concept in everything. All martial arts are the same in that way. Nice. Um, so I'd like to look at some of your footage. Uh, would you like to, uh, which clip would you like to talk about first? No, which one? I leave it to you. Like, okay. All right. I'll whichever you like the best. <laughs> okay. I'll do a screen share. Um, just take uh, two seconds and should be right here. Okay. All right. So you see the video? Uh-huh. All right. So this one, tell us about this, this one before I start it. This is a video of my training for an action scene in the TV drama, special TV drama, Futatsu no Sokoku. Okay. Futatsu no Sokoku means two motherlands. And it was a special drama aired one year ago. Okay. I think it was on uh, Nihon TV. Nice. Let's check if my out. memory was correct. Let's check so, it out. Yeah, can, yeah, please show you it. Can, you can talk us through it, what's going on. It's uh, actually a very interesting shoot. And this is just a yeah. practice. This isn't even just the show. This isn't the show. Oh, yeah, this is the training. It's not the actual scene where we fight. So what are you guys oh. doing here? Uh, this was uh, training to see how hard I can hit. And the other guy reacts as if he's my partner, the other, the other actor. Okay. Because, you know, unlike uh, actual kumite or sparring, when we do these action clips for a TV show, we can't exactly hit each other. Right. Or at least not too hard. Okay. So we play with the camera angle to see how it looks. It needs to look like you're hitting the guy hard. Oh, so right there, he just did something with your arm. What did he do? He, yeah, I did that to emphasize on a big hit. Like if you have an actual match and you have to fight your opponent, you, don't you would want to, want to make that as small as possible. But they okay. said that since this is the purpose of t for TV, you have to open your ha hand a little bit more so that it can look like a big punch. Ah, that's an interesting And here point. we practice uh, receiving the hit, getting hit. I don't actually get hit here, but it plays with the camera angle and the speed. Okay. So it looks as if you actually took the hit. <laughs> yeah, here you get, a, you get punched and then you strike back. Okay. My partner in the actual drama was uh, the super famous Japanese actor, Oguri Shun, uh -huh. who played in uh, Hanayori Dango and GTO. He's one of the am most amazing uh, Japanese male actors. And I don't know which was better because I w I've been a big fan of his ever since childhood. I don't know if it was better getting to hit him or getting hit by him. Oh, they really? were both amazing experiences. That sounds crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, I never imagined I would ever be in an action scene with one of the actors uh, I've adored ever since I was a kid. Well, that's the amazing thing you're talking about, right? Because I know I've trained too. And like when you're actually competing, the whole deal is not to show them what you're doing. And in TV, yes. you have to do the exact opposite. You have to show. The audience has to see the the violence or not the violence, but the, the action. Um, yeah, exactly. Really amazing contradiction. 
Um, because yeah, if you showed that, that you, they would just move away. I mean, if, if somebody knew something, <laughs> but I had that same issue when I was working like a little small college shoot and I was like yeah. coaching this little boxing scene and, uh, the, the, the girl had never hit pads before and she started feeling like empowered, like, yeah, I can do this. I can hit. And I was like, well, do one punch, make sure we can see it. But she's like, no, but it has to be real. I have to go fast. I have to make it look real. It's like, but she actually hit the other girl and the other girl had never been hit before. You oh. know? And uh, so we had to take a little break because if you haven't experienced that, I know anybody that's ever been hit before, you know, like that's not good, but I'm not going to die. But you have to like take, we had to take the time and be like, okay, you know, let's get some water, do what you need to do. Even though, you know, based on you or me, it's like, I knew she just got a little, little pop, you know, a little pop in the cheek. And, yeah. but, but like, yeah, cause we were all amateurs, you know, I had to like, you know, take your time, do what you need to do. And then I said, you know, make sure everything is clear. I'm sure that's more what it's like on TV. It's about clarity more than tactics, I would assume. I'm just guessing. True, true. It has to look amazing. It has to look cool. Like, even if it's not effective at all, like, if it's a real match, uh, they, they would see you long before you do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Your opponent would see and stop you just like this, and he can block it. But mm -hmm. for the purpose of TV, if you make this really big, and they then put it on fast forward, it looks like this super amazing punch that hit the other guy. He wasn't <laughs> able to evade it. And that, that's the magic of uh, camera <laughs> shooting. Nice. nice. Let's check out another thing. I really like this one video where you're uh, uh, in Aikido. It's Aikido, right? Um, uh, let me see which one. Right here. Oh, yes, yes, so, yes, yes. So here, let's start at the beginning. So. What, tell us what's happening here. Um, so this is a technique from the position suariwaza, which is something you do when the opponent tries to grab uh, both of your hands. You do this uh, counter technique from a sitting position. Okay. And basically, what you have to do is draw him into submission with the nikyo lock. This is called nikyo. Mm -hmm. There are different locks in Aikido, Ikkyo, Nikkyo. This is Nikkyo. And now he, he shows uh, how effective this technique is a few times before everyone can try it out for themselves. So he tries it on some of the most experienced uh, sensei in Bulgaria. This was a seminar in Bulgaria in Plovdiv 2013. Oh, this is in and Bulgaria. Then as, as, yeah, yeah. As a joke, he said, well, why don't you try it too? Because he knew that I was practicing a little bit too. And he did it a little bit more slowly for me. But basically, it's the same technique you just saw. Mm -hmm. So uh, what he didn't know was that... Uh, yeah, <laughs> he fixed my head. Uh, what he didn't know was that I did gymnastics when I was um, in primary school for one year. Oh, really? Yeah, and I guess that that made me really flexible. I know that genes are involved as well, but if you can <laughs> further enhance that by by training, you can become so flexible that even looks like this, you can see he goes almost all the way. Yeah, it sounds like somebody else is tapping out, but not you. The the nah. person watching is tapping out. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's why he continued to make it many, many, many more times until I tap, but. I just uh, let go of all of the air which was inside my lungs. And you can see in my hand, it doesn't tap. <laughs> it just, it really doesn't hurt if you're relaxed and if you uh, let go of all of the air inside your lungs. Uh, I think it if would you hurt can me. breathe out. That would hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends, depends on the person. Most people, for most people, that doesn't work. But if you train that and do it many, many times, yeah, some of these submission holds won't won't have an effect on you. Well, I think it's interesting, like um, it's demonstration and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, in a real conflict, we don't have the 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 lines aren't drawn very clearly, so we don't know it's a fight until it's a it's already a fight. And so, 
Of course, if you were reacting, you could possibly get it out of the arm lock before it was. You, there's a certain point where you can't get out, um, but uh, but that's the point. In real life, we don't expect to get wrist lock. We don't expect the person to know what they're doing. But usually, with a wrist lock, it's because you're doing something bad, and somebody's. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you exactly, know? exactly. It's so uh, you know, like uh, someone you know, you often see some. That guy gets drunk, uh, picks on a girl, he grabs her hand, tries to drag her with him. And that's one of the situations where maybe you can use one of the wrist lock, lock techniques. It's well, for self-defense mainly. Well, doing like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, some people do wrist locks, right? And uh, it's always seen as a very dirty thing, right? And yeah. <laughs> like, it's illegal in Judo. Uh, you can't do wrist locks. You can break their arm, but you can't break their wrist, I guess. Uh, that, it's funny yeah. how each, each martial art discipline draw, draws its own lines. Yes, um, yes, yes. That's interesting. Uh, everyone is unique and has its own rules, and you have to follow them. Yeah, so, but like it was in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, like a lot of times, a lot of times people won't tap out from a wrist lock, but what they will do is expose their arms so you could get something else. But like uh -huh. in some places, so, like judo makes it illegal, but but oftentimes in judo, using a wrist lock, even though they don't tap out from it, it's a good way to get them to move. And mm -hmm. then you do something else. But in judo, it's illegal. Uh, it, I'm sorry. Kodokan I judo. See. Kodokan judo, it's illegal in competition. And so, like, a lot of the actual techniques that, you know, Kano kind of worked on and there's different parts of judo, you know, we, we, we want something – Kind of like before, like with Masoyama, we want something for TV. We want something that everybody can see and understand what happens. And so we have these rules. And it's so funny. There's always a bureaucracy that makes these decisions about what is acceptable procedures. And uh, I, I think it's like somewhat limiting, but I think it's good because I think it encourages you to do more different martial arts and get different. Because like you say, it, each different one, it's like a different spirit like a different perspective mm -hmm. in you. And I think that that's really great that you brought that up. Um, true, true. I'm also happy that I had the opportunity to train three different martial arts and get the best out of them because it really broadens your horizons and you get to understand the way that other people train. And even though they're quite different apart, they have similarities. And mm -hmm. each one of them teaches you something valuable which you never know where you can apply uh, in the dojo or outside of it. In my case, I never thought that I'd be able to use what I learned in martial arts in acting, but it happened. It wasn't my goal from the start, that that's how, just how things turned out. There was an opportunity, I just decided to go for it, and I was rewarded, I got the role. So I think that people should try out as many things as they can. and. There is no wasted knowledge. Everything you do is a small chunk of knowledge which builds up to what you are and who you are in the future. Great. Uh, so let's just watch this last one. I think this is probably one of the most entertaining ones. Uh, oh, yeah, then, sure. And then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so I It's a comedy TV show with V6, um, some really popular ex-boy band members in Japan. Oh, really? And this is the part where they show different types of foreigners who do something amazing. The whole title of this show is Amazing Punk. You know, amazing in Japan. Amazing Punk. Amazing Punk. Okay. All right. All right. So feel free to talk us through anything or if you want to, like, tell us about it after it's over. You might just want to experience this because this is really okay. hilarious. <laughs> All right. I, I won't talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put input anything, feel free. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Applause. Bulgarian karate fighter in Japan. <laughs> so, so yeah, what I'm going to do is the guru guru bato. <laughs> and that's the dizzy well you'll see they'll see dizzy fire yeah
This is the first time, you know? I uh, hit his hands deliberately. <laughs> oh, you first I do it without, yeah. <laughs> we thought it, it'd be interesting if I do that. The second time, okay, you see me destroy the bat, but I, has, I haven't done the dizzy part yet. What is, now that, is, what is that, that you that you kicked? I couldn't quite make it out. I wasn't sure what it was. It's a bat, a baseball bat. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this not the one where... This, is this a different video? Uh, also, this isn't one no. where you get dizzy, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, first, I do the breaking of the bat without the dizzy part, and then I get dizzy and break it again. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's a different video. Yeah, it's, it's the same one. Oh, is it? Because I thought it stopped there. Ah, okay, okay. There's a second part. Okay, let's get to the second part. Actually, I don't know if I... Uh... I know you sent it to me because I had it. I, I, thought, I just thought that was the same one. I think it's inside the link which you closed before we started the meeting. Uh, because all right, there well, was two videos there. All right, well, I guess we'll have to turn in that time to see that part. <laughs> yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did close that, right? But that's okay. We don't want to share your personal information. I mean... No problem. Uh, prepare, it, prepare it for next time and send it yeah. to you. Okay. Right on, Antonio. Well, that was like a really enriching like uh, conversation, man. Uh, I'm glad to know uh, kind of what you're doing, and I really hope to hear more. Yeah, I'm happy that uh, you invited me to take part in the show. I was happy to talk about my experiences, and there's other things I'd like to share too, so looking forward to the next time. Yeah, we want to see more about your acting roles and your martial arts, or just any funny stories you have. Sure, awesome. Thank you so much. All right.